we are fully dedicating to discussions about our steering committee. And besides talking about uh, the elections and, and how is the, uh, the procedures should be nominated, we also have some of the current members of the committee here and they will be able to uh, answer some of our questions and help you in this process of nominating uh, yourself to, to be part of the steering committee. Emily, can you pass to the next slide? Uh, before starting uh, presenting the agenda today, I want to present myself. My name is Isabella Spindola. I am the membership engagement officer here at the IWA, responsible for the Young Water Professionals community. And I'm also the one responsible for uh, the process of this uh, nominating process that we launched. And what we are doing today, so we are going to discuss what is the Young Water Professional Steering Committee, the Emerging Water Leaders that we call them. Uh, we are doing the subcommittee introductions, and then we have this QA on roles and elections. So here are the photos, some of their members are here. So we have Emily, Farouk, Inez, Nietzsche, uh, Huiji is also here, and I think that Pavel, Jacob, and Hagmar will be joining us uh, later. Some of you might already know this, some of you might be new to IWA, and you might be also interested in knowing what is the steering committee. Um, so it's a representative body of all the young water professionals that are members of the International Water Association. And the main responsibility of the committee is to provide advice to the organization about the young water professionals. So what are the perspectives about the sector and also about the strategies that IWA has. And they're also responsible for encouraging and enhancing all the ways that we have to engage new generations of uh, water leaders, and of course, supporting the professional development of the young water professionals in all activities in the national and international level, and I would say also in the regional level. <laughs> so here we have a picture of the IWA structure. So we have the secretariat here in the London office <laughs> where I am right now, but we also have the regional office in India and the office in Nanjing, China. And if you search um, in the below part of the slide, you have the Young Water Professional Committee and also the chapters. These are the main bodies that the Young Water Professionals they can be part of. They can be part of IWA, they can interact with us and they can guide us in this process of developing and creating opportunities for young water professionals. Here, I have another image about how uh, the young water professionals, they fit within IWA structure. So we have the IWA board, and then we have the national and international level. In the national level, we have the government members, and they're really connected with the country chapters. So if um, you are in a country that has a government member that is representing IWA in the country, your chapter is connected to this government member. And the steering committee that uh, works in this international level, um, they interact a lot with the secretariat, but also with the strategic council. So they have uh, high level discussions, trying to advise the association in terms of attracting and empowering uh, young water professionals. And here at the secretariat, what we do, we try to engage all these levels um, of uh, young water professionals that they are acting within IWA and creating opportunities for them and also giving support. So if you want to start a chapter in our country, you can have the support not only uh, from me, from IWA Secretariat, but also from the steering committee. We have a subcommittee that is dedicated uh, to this. So we have all the ways, uh, all the tools to, to help you in this process. But this is just an example uh, about how we work with the young water professionals. And if you are wondering about, okay, so where are the chapters of IWA? 
uh, this is uh, one of the newest image that we have in terms uh, where the chapters are located. So we have chapters all over the world and we are looking uh, for to create new chapters and creating this platform, this community to, to support and engage young writer professionals all, uh, all over the world. So I've talked too much. I think I will give the spotlight <laughs> to the members of the committee because they are the ones that will help you in this process. So we can start going with our first subcommittee. So Faro Kaniti, the floor Hello. is yours. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, welcome everyone. I'm so happy to see so many people are here interested in this great committee. And before I go to the detail of what we've done, I just need to let you know that don't miss this opportunity because <laughs> we enjoy it and we don't want to leave. But you know, it's just the process because you will enjoy a lot of this committee. Well, typically, especially in our subcommittee, this is my favorite. Obviously, that's why I signed up for this. Um, I'm Farouk, I'm representing uh, Canadian um, or North American uh, chapters of young professionals. And uh, me and Niti served as chapter coordinator coordinators and it was such a great work and rewarding because uh, first you can broaden your network internationally so fast you meet so many great people you you connect in in personal le levels even you know although you're so far away but you just 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 there's so many things to do in there in terms of the events we have done um money thing but it's up to you how much you want to do of course but this is what we did so we have global coordination calls where we're along with iwhq we organize calls that gathers all the young professional chapters around the world and we talk about the specific topic that, that's needed for for the young professional chapters and this happens quarterly so you would uh, lead and coordinate the, the the call and help the iwd to implement this so that's one thing and also we have another call which is called regional calls that me and Niti initiated this this round it's up to you if you want to continue it or not but this is something that's happening every month we would have a call for a region that's geographically close to each other for example one call would be for south africa one would be for north america so so the countries that are close to each other can connect in personal level and not only that we also had great other opportunities i'm not going to talk about all of them i'm going to let me take a take on this <laughs> uh, but thank you so much Jordan. if you have any questions we're here okay to answer your questions but i can talk forever niti pass yeah. it to you <laughs> Thanks, Farouk. Uh, yeah, I'll I'll add to uh, the amazing things Farouk has already mentioned. Um, I totally agree with her. It's an amazing uh, opportunity that gives you a platform to, uh, of course, build your network globally, uh, regional level engagement, as well as within your country. It gives you a lot of visibility. I'll talk personally about myself. Uh, I've got uh, so much visibility in my water uh, professional networks as well, and uh, that has helped me collaborate with uh, different stakeholders working on water at different levels, including the central government in India, and uh, globally, uh, amazing opportunities came my way. Uh, just to give you one example, the Denmark's uh, water challenge events uh, have been an annual event now, and I've got the uh, a way to gain some leadership experience in, in these uh, initiatives where uh, I've mentored the various teams from all over India and uh, those engagements have been amazing, connecting with the young energy and uh, learning, uh, you know, their perspective. And that also uh, brought along options for me to connect with uh, people working from or studying different uh, subjects, including electronics to, you know, civil engineering, things like that. So uh, it, it has been a great uh, contribution to expanding my event, helping me connect with the right people, as well as uh, experience sharing in the sense that connecting at global level can, you know, uh, help you learn very quickly what has been successful for others and how you can improvise quickly without having to go on trying things yourself in, in your work related to water. 
So yeah, I can go on and on, but I think uh, I'll also have to stop here. But yes, as Farooq said, uh, please connect with us anytime uh, and we'll, we'll surely start uh, dropping in uh, our contact information in the chat very soon. So very, very happy to engage here. Yeah, I'll stop speaking there. <laughs> Thank you, Farouk and Ichi, for doing this um, overview about your civic committee. And then we can go to the next one. So, Hi, everyone. Yeah, Ines. Hey. Um, well, again, great to have so many here. Um, I will try to be very specific on, on what the work has been uh, or the focus on the specialist group. So basically, uh, from the presentation that you heard, uh, we do have uh, a set of specialist groups. Uh, there are quite a lot, over 30, uh, where uh, IW Way allows people who are, you know, nerds about a specific topic to uh, be invited to to groups or as a volunteer, you can just uh, join and follow uh, out of your interest or because you actually want to be an active engager and create activities around a specific topic. And um, that is mostly done through the IWA Connect channel. I don't know if you are aware of that. So, so I would strongly invite you to, to join the IWA Connect. It is currently being revised, uh, its version, and uh, we hope to, to bring you uh, very uh, new features very soon. So uh, the role of the specialist groups of the Emerging World Leaders responsible for the specialist groups is to support the revision and the implementation of strategies to enhance the engagement of young world professionals in those specialist groups. So what did we do? We, we contacted um, all the YWPs that were engaged in boards of specialist groups. And we asked them about their expectations and we, we ran a little survey to understand how we could support them. Because we felt that some specialist groups were very active and others were not. And we needed to understand if there was something that we could do to help. We did uh, actually uh, move on with that and had a, a formal meeting with some of them um, online, of course, um, where we were discussing um, what makes um, a strong YWP in a board, what tools do they need, and we realized that what is actually very important is to have seniors that understand that young world professionals need to be supported and, and highlighted. So based on that, then our next move was to actually de decide to act on the, the emerging, the, the specialist groups forum. And that one will happen on the World Water Congress and exhibition 2022 in Copenhagen. And the idea is that we will be helping the organization of that event so that we promote the recognition of YWPs and we connect the YWPs as well, not only within their own specialist groups, but also across the specialist groups. Um, you will also see that there has been the start of a newsletter uh, sent by spe for specialist groups. So if you are involved in any specialist group, you are probably receiving an email uh, with news. So that's also a way for you to engage further uh, and get to know more uh, of the work that each specialist group does and um, get some ideas of what you can do in a specialist group. So it's rather interesting. Um, I think I, I mentioned more or less what were the, the considerations. I, I will also like to bring a little bit of the challenges and I'll do that in 20 seconds. Um, and the reason for that, you know, is that when I applied for, for working with the specialist groups, I was full of hopes and, and dreams, uh, which is great. And I still have other hopes and dreams, but they are just adjusted to the reality, which is also fine, because that makes them possible. So the idea is that, um, uh, you know, uh, there was a lot of lack of data, like, you know, uh, questions I would ask, okay, how many wider do we have in boards or how many, you know, and all of that uh, data needed to be collected still. So we took like half a year to almost a year to, for that data to, to get to our hands because the IWA organization in the headquarters also changed a lot in from 2020 to 2022. Uh, and that delayed a bit the process and it was hard. And then, then there was also this, I was working, uh, well, I'm working with Yuji, and, you know, she's on the other side of the world, which makes things really fun, um, but also comes with challenges that we need to realize, oh, 
like in the beginning, uh, we were setting meetings, but it wouldn't work the platform, the technology wouldn't work or things like that. So we needed to adjust and find the right ways. And I think that bring, uh, brought me to, or raised some awareness, you know, that we need to adjust our ways of communicating and, and wh when we want to talk with the rest of the world. So that was a good eye opening, I think for me. Um, and um, what else? Well, an overall COVID, you know, <laughs> but that was, I guess, <laughs> with everyone, uh, because the need to connect with people requires some human connection as well. And, and even though we tried with live events, um, I cannot wait to see all of this team together, you know. Uh, but that is it from my side. I'll be, of course, here till the end of the session. So if you have any more questions, just let me. Thank you, Ines. So we can go to the next subcommittee. So I think uh, Michael and Lyudmila aren't able to join us today, but they have um, kindly put together uh, a bit of information about what the Events and Communications Subcommittee does and what their goals are. Uh, so I can present on their behalf. So hi, I'm Emily, I'm the chair of the committee. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, so the Events and Communications Committee are, Subcommittee are a really crucial part of the steering committee in terms of leadership of uh, the major events that um, our group delivers on and also in terms of giving a voice in other major events that the association delivers. So as an overview, the three main goals are bringing YWPs together by supporting those online and in-person events, um, supporting the organization, supporting representation of YWPs more critically at um, broader events like non-YWP specific events, um, and then giving support to other sub subcommittees and extending their and improving their communication. So uh, for example, in helping to prepare communications materials, LinkedIn uh, content, things like that uh, for reaching out to the wider YWP network. So some of the things that the events and sub communication subcommittee have contributed to in the past two years over their term, um, there's, the flagship event, which was the IWA Emerging Water Leaders Virtual Forum, which we held in 2021. That was sort of an offshoot of an event that's normally held um, in person at the World Water Congress and which we will be having in person this year in Copenhagen. Um, they helped contribute to a session that we collaborated on with other young uh, or youth water networks uh, at the World Water Forum. And yeah, like I said, um, they're helping to lead the uh, the planning of our Emerging Water Leaders Forum session at the World Water Congress coming up this year. Um, and we'll be helping in some of the communication materials in the lead up to that as well. So you can keep your eyes and ears uh, tuned for those uh, coming up soon. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Emily, for being in the discussion about the events and communication. And as I said, we are planning for the next uh, the forum, and we have a lot of ideas uh, to bring the best for the forum. So we can go to the next slide and the next subcommittee. I think we're online, and also Jacob. Yep. Great. Okay. Um, hi. Um, my name is Hagimar, and I'm the member of the career building subcommittee. Uh, the core of it is Leanne, who can, you can see on the picture, and myself and um, Jacob, who's our uh, secretary, he joined uh, for some of these um, parts as well. And that's why we added him onto the slide. Um, just to give you an idea what we do or what we did, it's Obviously, we were kind of challenged, or not kind of, but severely challenged by uh, COVID and all of those issues that arose from it, um, lack of travel, in-person meetings, and so on. So we also, our initial plans for the career building subcommittee were kind of hijacked uh, by this pandemic. Um, and therefore, we kind of had to reschedule and replan and the result was now the Port to Friday initiative, which is um, showcasing what we do um, and uh, to use social media to promote career development. Um, and we um, in interviewed a few of our fellow um, steering committee members. And then we also, um, or Leanne, uh, um, involved herself a lot in the South African YWP chapter. Um, with the focus on career building, I supported the building of 
Bridges event series, which was driven by the German YWP chapter. So our home chapters essentially. So you can already see that you can focus also on your home chapters or you're naturally going to involve your home chapters into the work of your career building or of the, the subcommittee you're going to work with. And, and lastly, now we're planning for the hopefully um, in-person meeting uh, in September um, to uh, design a workshop um, um, on with a focus on career building, which we already obviously did. And now we just have to see how where it fits into the program. And obviously, I'll also stay on for the remainder of the call and I'm happy for any questions or any also inspiration regarding career building. Thank you. Thank you, Agmar. So we can go to the next subcommittee. I think that we have Pavel here. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Isabella. Thank you all. Uh, first of all, let me share you that uh, what IWA makes a very good association is that the members create uh, their own reputation and their own future through organization of many activities. And this group, Young Water Professionals, is one of these uh, very strong groups, not only with this chapter, uh, I mean, not only with this uh, strength committee, with all uh, specialist groups and subcommittees in different areas. In this case, in the Strategic Council, uh, Emma and myself try to promote the formal uh, participation of two Young Water Professionals, uh, Emerging Water Leaders members, uh, in the strategic council of the IWA. Uh, the strategic council in, uh, of the IWA is a group of, with around maybe 30, 35 members from different uh, subcommittees uh, through the, the, the broad IWA association. So a role there is try to set up the emerging water leaders agenda that used to hear and most hear the young water professional needs. So for us, it's very important to hear the uh, uh, it's it's important to hear what is uh, what are the initiatives from each subcommittee. Try to organize them through the objectives and key results to see in the near future or in the middle term. So for us, I believe that it has been a very good experience. Not only connecting with other professionals. More than that, I think that is very important to hear and to feel the the needs, the current needs and the future needs of the young water professionals. I believe that uh, a role uh, uh, was important and can be very important in the future because we try to figure out what are the next steps uh, addressing the empowering of young water professionals, learning capacity, probably professional development, and that is stuff that may enhance the experience of the young water professionals and the professional development. So thank you all. Thank you, Pavel. Emily? Can you move to the next right. slide? So it's yes. yours. <laughs> it's fine. Um, now, I'm not sure if we've got Jacob on the call today, but uh, Fisher let us know he wouldn't be able to join. But um, this is just about, uh, I don't know, we don't have a formal name for our subcommittee, but it's the chair, vice chair and secretary, and we work together fairly closely. Um, but essentially we have kind of distinct roles. So the chair and the vice chair, um, work together in support of each other. So um, the three main objectives being to support YWP strategy development and implementation. So we work quite closely with Emran Pabal, our strategic council reps on that and making sure we're consistent with broader IWA strategy. We help coordinate the different subcommittee activities. So we maintain a bit of an oversight of what the different subcommittees are doing and we coordinate um, all uh, Jacob, our secretary uh, schedules those meetings and um, I will chair them. And finally, we represent um, the IWA YWP community at different events and meetings. So if they need a, <laughs> a sort of a representative of the YWP body, um, frequently, frequently we'll be called on to, to represent. Um, and then we're also act as the sort of main contact point between the committee and the secretariat for more sort of administrative matters and different functions and, and questions. So um, and like I said, Jacob as our secretary, so he schedules coordinates reports on committee meetings, which sounds like 
a fairly standard task, but it is a huge undertaking and Jacob does an excellent job of that. Um, he also helped to establish different communication processes within the committee and supports different sort of managerial activities and making sure that, yeah, we're all working together properly as well. So um, as an FYI to people who um, are new to the YWP steering committee and uh, looking to nominate. The chair role is only open to people who've sat on the committee previously. So I was um, the secretary in a previous committee, um, but the vice chair and the secretary roles are open to, to any new applicants. Um, so yeah, just as a general overview, two of the big activities that the three of us were involved in the past two years, the first being the coordination of that virtual EWL forum. So like I said, we worked closely with the events and communication subcommittee and then the coordination of the uh, strategic plan for the EWL steering committee which is our former name it's changing to YWP steering committee as I understand but uh, yeah we we coordinated the creation of the strategic plan so revisiting that and um, iterating on that over the years and working again closely with the strategic council uh, subcommittee to make sure that that's aligned with association goals and things. So those are the general responsibilities of the chair, vice chair and secretary. Just as a sum up, I'll say, um, I've been on the committee for four years now, um, and it's been an incredible opportunity in terms of, I think like others have said, the networking opportunities, you get to really squeeze every penny out of your IWA membership in this kind of role, because you are meeting and working with people from every chapter, from different specialist groups, from different parts of the association that you never would have interacted with otherwise. Um, and also it's just a fantastic learning opportunity as a young professional. You're taking on a leadership role within the YWP community as being part of the steering committee and really giving, having a chance to uh, give a voice to YWP members and, and make sure your opinion's heard. So um, through association activities and through directing the strategy of the group. So I, I strongly recommend if you, if you want to take a more active role in the association to, to consider putting in a nomination. But I think this brings us to info from, from Isabella. <laughs> Thank you, Emily, for, for uh, doing the final part of the presentation about the, the subcommittees and the roles of each of the members they have with the committee. So the main information about today is that we launched the call for the new student committee. I will add the link to the chat. And what I want to, to present here is the timeline that we have. So, we launched the call for the nomination and it will be open until the end of April. Uh, early May, uh, we'll be doing the check of the eligibility. So we have the criteria and we're just going over all the nominations that we received to check if they are eligible or not to be part of the, the committee. Then we also have the nominations committee. They will put forward uh, the voting and we need to, we will ensure like gender, geographical age and background diversity during this. And uh, the voting period will be until the end of May. And then we will collect the results and we will present the outcome results to the, government, uh, the governance and nomination committee of IWA. And in June, we will present this recommendation to the IWA board. And the first meeting of the new committee will be doing the, the forum and the Congress in September in Copenhagen. So this is a general timeline uh, that we are working with. Okay, next slide. So now is the part that you can ask all the questions <laughs> that you have it. So um, Emily, maybe we can, uh, you can stop sharing your presentation so uh, everyone can see our faces. And please feel free to type in the chat if you're not comfortable with, but if you're okay, just open your camera and your mic and you can ask the questions to any of the members, including myself. <laughs> including if you have questions about like, the nomination process or yeah filling out the forms or if you're not sure about trying to choose between one role or another in the, in the application or anything like that uh yeah let us know <laughs> uh good afternoon um i'm steven de Bademark from belgium and i have a question about the, the application the procedure is it possible to contact one of you while doing the application because within aquafine 
we still need to decide who is going to apply and it will be probably in the, the next week i think yeah probably next week um is it possible to contact one of you for specific questions concerning the application Sylvan, uh, hi. <laughs> so general um, questions regarding the, the nomination process, you can send a mail to, uh, to me. I will type in the chat later. And if you want to know more about the role and yep. uh, about the subcommittee, you can send them a mail yep. to understand uh, about what they're doing, uh, the challenges and the objective of the subcommittee. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you. I think we had a question in the chat as well uh, from Shotar. Do you need references to apply? Uh, no, <laughs> you don't. <laughs> um, you just you self nominate um, and and write some sort of. I mean, it's good maybe having a friend or a colleague to like review your um, your nomination if you like. Uh, I had a friend look over mine. I think when I applied, but uh, no, you don't need references. Yeah, we didn't have friends in this. All the information about the nomination and all the documents, um, I already shared the link here. So you can go over uh, and check if you have any other questions. And the applications, um, they're all online uh, via this link that we have on SurveyMonkey. And you just need to upload your CV also there and uh, reply to all the questions that we put in the forms. Can can I make a like a, a question? Yeah. <laughs> to the audience, can I switch that a little bit? Could I hear a little bit about like how did you get in touch with IWA, or if you have a chapter that you started to work with, or what happened? Like if anyone, I'm through because the most amazing thing is that you find people that are incredible because you know, everyone is driven by something and you realize that you're not alone in the water sector and there's something in common. Uh, but this, he, the stories that bring us to IWA are always very interesting for me. So if anyone would feel comfortable with just sharing what is the motivation or how did you get in touch with IWA, that would be great for me to hear. Uh, maybe I can jump in and give, uh, so, uh, my name is Avinash. I have to admit I'm new to IWA. I just joined IWA as a member just three or four days ago. Um, but overall, I've been in the water industry for like six years now. Uh, so I work with a, a management consulting firm very much focused on the water sector. Um, so we normally work with investors, financial investors in water, NGOs, your interdevelopment organizations, and all the commercial so I'm very much coming from a commercial side of the water industry. Um, and it was very exciting to see this whole other world of on the ground, technical experts, uh, students learning about water. So uh, for me, it's more about exploring how we could, I, at least for me, I could bring these two worlds together um, because coming from, I work with a lot of water companies as well. So it's, it's very funny to see a lot of my clients and colleagues in the IWA, uh, governing bodies and steering committees as well. So yeah, so, where, where are you sitting? Uh, so I'm based in Paris, uh, in France. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. I, I'm working for a private company. I, I did a PhD in chemistry and then and now I'm working in the private sector and it's really cool. This merging between the two worlds is the most crazy. Yes, amazing I, I, thing. And I have to admit, admit, and as I've looked up some of the history and I have to say your current employer is a current client of mine. Very well. <laughs> yes. Well, I hope you're well treated. Uh, if you need anything, let me know if I can help anyway. Because, uh, you know, and that's another thing, we really extend our network. And uh, on top of that, we just, you know, there's a lot of things about water that, you know, businesses that were created that considered a way to look at water that was based simply on um, a traditional economic base. And, and now our generation has a further understanding of the values of water and also how water touches across different sectors and different industries and, and stakeholders. And, and I feel like somehow when we communicate at our level, our generation, everything just becomes 
simpler. <laughs> you know, we're just more transparent overall. We're more honest. We don't have much more to lose. We just say how it is. And, and that's a great thing. So Evanesh, if, if it comes to anything that I, you can see that I can help you with or that, we, that you need to like talk about, just let me know. Indeed, I, I think that's the biggest opportunity because a lot of the works so of the clients that we work with, we always bring people from the commercial side of the industry, working with companies or people who actually take decisions of building treatment plants or scaling up technologies. But we never, we rarely bring, bring in the other side of multi-level government stakeholders from the ground point of view. So that level of decision making or the stakeholder impact is always a gap. So that's the overall Really uh, cool to, to understand. Yeah. Avinash, I had a question for you, and I hope I don't put you in corner, but <laughs> I was just in, <laughs> interested to know that uh, you're quite new to IW and what position interested you to come to this call and, and, and hear to us. And I think it's okay if you don't want to share, but I think for everyone, it's okay to share which position you're interested to because we're all here to help you, to coach you, to to tell you what we did so you know what are you signing up signing up for because <laughs> sometimes you, you you know you you sign up for something to give them but then end up doing something else so feel free to say that well, well i mean i would have to admit i haven't decided on applying for any okay. questions given that i'm quite new to iwa and not entirely sure what it entails and and i don't even think that i fit your criteria of having a minimum <laughs> one year of member in uh, uh with iwa so i think yeah I, th I think that's the first thing so i haven't given a thought about it but iwa i think one of um, i think one of the board member or your strategic committee member of iwa itself is one of the uh, partners or managing directors of the company that i'm working with as well so okay you know of iwa i've known of iwa for many years but never really got into it i always join uh, programs i don't know if you guys know of global water intelligence Yes. Uh, this is the commercial side of the water industry. So I'm very active on that side of things, but awesome. not on the uh, uh, on your the what you guys are doing about so. But no, with that you. internal with that sorry with that internal contract, I'm sure we will see you in Copenhagen. Then it's really easy <laughs> for you to pull out the arguments for that. Yeah, I've oh, been really very cool. very quite a lot uh, quite a lot a uh, lot of time uh, visiting uh, many of the water clients in uh, Denmark. Very well. Um, Very nice, but it's good that you joined us so you can yeah. know more about the community, um, what, we're, what we are doing, uh, what we want to do in the future, and also to get engaged in, in new opportunities that we have. So we mentioned here about the forum that we start planning, and Ines just mentioned again about the Congress. So yeah, you, you have opportunities to, to be part of it. There's also opportunities over the longer term. So some members of our committee joined because uh, sometimes the subcommittees recruit um, other members of the YWP community to support in their activities. So I know Jacob was involved with the previous steering committee uh, because he worked as part of the subcommittees of the career development group before uh, joining the committee formally. So um, yeah, there's lots of different pathways to join, even if yeah you don't get elected in this round. Happy to look forward. And I keep sending a lot of emails about opportunities Farouk just mentioned <laughs> before we start. So uh, almost like every week I have like some something new that I want to share with you, um, some opportunity that, that you can be part of. So uh, I know that we have the, the call for volunteers to be part of the, the Climate uh, Smart um, Committee of Practice meeting. So we have things coming up. So I do recommend that you sign up for the newsletter also, because I put everything there. <laughs> yeah, Blessing, you had a question? Yeah, so um, I joined the IWA a little over a year ago, and that was the first time I was actually coming across the IWA, and I thought I should register. So um, I'm from Nigeria, and I work in the water industry in a hospital, actually with well, that remain plants in a hospital. But currently I'm in the UK. I mean, I'm studying masters in water and wastewater engineering. So I learned about the volunteering for the um, forum, the organizing community of the Imagine Water Leaders. And I 
applied for that. So I got offered uh, the position of the secretary, which I applied for. So um, I want to know if there is any rule on this that, like, can I apply for another role? Will it clash? Will I have, you know, so I just, I've been trying to figure that out because I really want to um, expand my network in the mm. water industry and I'm just open to a lot of possibilities and yeah. <laughs> you're yeah, definitely allowed to apply to both. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Okay. You see, so, as volunteer, you can take as much as you want, you know. Yeah. And and it's it's actually and you learn different skills on both things, mm -hmm. so so it's it makes sense. Okay. Thank you. The answer is yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everyone wanted to say it at the same time. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so we are like this. So yeah. blessing, just for you to know. So Emily, Farouk, and Ichi, they are also part of the um, the organizing committee, and we also have Agustin here. He's also part of the organizing um, committee for the forum. So yeah. we have our own, own meeting later. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah sure. <laughs> but okay. yes, you can apply it. Okay. Thank yeah. You. Yeah. And in fact, as like a, a um, as a member of the AWL, or sorry, as a wider, as a member of the YWP steering committee, um, you'll be involved with different elements of the forum as well. So it's all it's all integrated in once you're once you're in the, the warm embrace of the YWP community, uh, <laughs> you'll be involved in plenty of things. Uh, so as long as you volunteer. There is a second part of the question, actually. Yeah. OK, which is um, so the condition attached to the um, this um the first volunteering position i'm holding the organizing committee so the mail i got from you from isabella i got a mail from iwa that says um the iwa is not responsible for transport and accommodation and substance so i wanted to ask because you said you'll give us a letter to ask for external funding but is the iwa responsible for the uh registration for the program or not for the what was the Congress? No, we are not responsible for that also. Oh, okay. Um, and I'm, I have your letter ready and I'm going to send it this week. <laughs> okay, thank you. All right. Your sponsors or your employers are responsible for, for, for the forum and also for this committee, probably if you haven't paid attention, there will be two main events uh, for, for the whole entire terms of two years that you would get your employers or supervisor approval to sponsor you to attend to these two events. So this is something great that you get commitment beforehand. I did that to my supervisor two years ago and now I graduated, so I'm, uh, he's gonna pay because <laughs> that's me, right? <laughs> But you yeah. can. I feel like around. I feel like he got it. He got off scot free because he didn't have to register you for the the last congress. So this is just yeah. I guess. <laughs> so just something to put in your mind that this is also another great opportunity for you to get sponsored uh, from your employer because because they they will commit for that beforehand. Um, another question I wanted to bring to the audience was that how in the world no one is asking for the time commitment? Is everyone has so much time or less time or no? What is it? <laughs> if you're having any particular position in mind, you should, this is the time to ask about the actual time commitment and distribution. And it's totally all right. And it, there's no competition here, by the way, if, if anyone feels like, oh, I shouldn't say that, but I'm ready for this role. And you already asked the question for us. <laughs> yeah, but I need someone to ask for a specific position, right? Because I can brag about mine forever, but probably no one here would be interested for that. <laughs> so. Okay, um, I'm going to ask about the secretary role. And Jacob? Yeah, Jacob. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Jacob, your your audio is crashing. Now you're muted. <laughs> <laughs> Just, uh, I think he's fixing his input. Uh, okay. I hope that he doesn't say depends how long the meetings are, like how. Yeah. <laughs> I imagine, like. <laughs> Don't scare blessing, okay? <laughs> okay, can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Yeah, that's much better. Okay. Yeah. So the secretary role is an interesting one. 
Um, it's, a, it's one that makes you know what is happening in every subcommittee. So it's interesting. And then uh, it helps me to do a little bit of um, uh, lobbying at the back, um, telling other subcommittees, these guys are doing this, why don't you try this? Um, uh, also um, advising the, the management of the EWL on some of the things that we can do to ensure that everybody is working together properly. Uh, so that, that is what interests me. Uh, writing of the minutes, um, preparing the agenda, setting up meetings is quite tedious actually. <laughs> but it's interesting because it makes you learn a lot of things and then it helps you to improve on your reporting skills and then um, you, you also get to use that to expand your network. So uh, if anything, I would advise everybody to go for the secretary rule <laughs> because you get to enjoy everything. <laughs> and how and much time, Jacob? Time. <laughs> you know, naturally, like, time, time. <laughs> and how much time, Jacob, do you usually use? I mean, you can tell us if it's only half an hour. We know it's more. <laughs> yeah. No, it's less. Time. Um, let's say if you have a meeting, I have to prepare the agenda, I have to prepare the minutes. I can say maybe two hours in that week for, for, for that because sometimes you have to go back and listen to the whole meeting again. So it's, it's two hours is not that much. It doesn't take a lot of time actually. Yeah. And we have well, meetings like, some, once, yeah, we do meetings like once every six weeks. Um, yeah. On a regular yeah. basis. Yeah. And I do some of these things lying on my bed during my leisure time. So. I think I'm biased. I was the secretary uh, in a past committee as well. I, I'm biased. I tend to agree with Jacob. It's a great way to, um, well, if, if you like knowing what everyone's doing, it's a great position to be in. Yeah, I never thought about like, that. I'm now wondering. What are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> no, yeah. I'm now no wondering every time questions. that he talked to me, I'm wondering what, what was really <laughs> going on. <laughs> Um, but it's a yeah very good way to very quickly get across like all of the different parts of the committee and um, also a great I think coming back to I think it was Inesha's point earlier like that thing about um, inclusivity in the way that we communicate and um, interact with each other and trying to find like what's the right platform or yeah what's the right tool for, for working with different people and <laughs> understanding the real constraint of um, making a meeting time that works across as many time zones as there are on the planet. So I see Jeff's on the call and I think you're in Melbourne, are you? So apologies and we've got- Sydney, actually a bit same <laughs> uh, time Sydney. zone. It is 10 yeah. p.m. and I've had my camera off half of this time because I've been... <laughs> And at the other end of the spectrum, we've got Pavel who for I think it's uh, just before 7 a.m. So <laughs> um, big respect to those of us on the, on the fringes of uh, acceptable time zones to be awake. Um, but yeah, usually but, the meetings are, they start at 1 p.m. like British time, London time. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Um, all right. Were, were there any other questions from people? Yeah, about yeah time commitments to different roles. Any more specific questions while we've still got you here? Yeah, I've got another very concrete one. Is it possible to sure. apply for two positions at one round? You can apply, you can, while you're like uh, filling up your form, you can uh, highlight the one that your first option and then the second okay. option. Perfect. Thank you. But in terms of the time, we only discussed it, uh, Jacobs, only the secretary. We didn't ask about the other subcommittees about the time. So who wants to go first? So, okay, Farouk, yours. <laughs> <laughs> sure, I'm like, I can always talk about it. Um, so it, it's, so I would say with my busy schedule, oh my God, this was amazing because this was the, my go-to thing that I, I wanted to relieve and have some fun time. Um, and I would say, although we did lots of activities, but um, they did it, they were not time consuming. I, I, I can tell that in a week, it was not more than two hours. So in a whole month, including the meetings, including the, sub, the, the whole committee meeting and everything, you wouldn't commit more than 10 hours per month. So, so that's, I would, I would say that's, that's the maximum to, to commit because it's mainly, you know, 
all uh, calls for the global coordination. You just connect with the people, you answer some emails, but but mainly it's networking, it's being on the call, sharing calls, and and that's it. So I would say the commitment is really, really amazing. And I really want to know who want to run for it because I want to coach you guys because me and me too, for sure, we're a lot better. <laughs> so <laughs> please let me know who's running for this position. I really want to <laughs> help you guys. <laughs> So for a community, remember to type your email in the chat yeah. so they can yeah, they sure. can send you uh, their questions. So yeah. um, the next one that I have here in my screen. So Pavel, how much time uh, in terms of time? Yeah. <laughs> no, so uh, we are talking about time consuming. So how long do you spend in your subcommittee? Oh, good question. <clears throat> I don't know, maybe uh, in average, maybe in between four and five hours per week. You know, sometimes we have the or, or meeting in the Emerging Water Leaders Committee, but the strategic council meetings are super early for me. And I need to prepare the context for the meeting because it's a huge meeting with uh, several points. And very accurate points. For example, try to show uh, to touch uh, topics and board topics, very specific as membership engagement, for example. And and we need to, to support that. So in that in that case, I think that is very time consuming uh, if we try to to participate in an accurate way. So, but 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 the the reward is very uh, is very good because we. Honestly, we learn other ways to work, not only our scheme to work, because we, I, I'm a assistant professor. I, I, I'm, I'm, in addition, I'm engineer, so I'm very straightforward, but I need to learn more soft ways to learn and to develop and organize my own work. You know, it, That's very important for me too. So I think that is time consuming, but you can split that time also in kind of time for learning skills and then time to develop and apply your skills. So definitely worry. Thank you, Pavel. Then the next one that I have, Ines. Yes, um, so for, for me, I, I think that the two hour a week is quite reasonable. Um, there was a lot of planning with the specialist groups and a lot of background work that didn't translate in, in a lot of events, uh, but that was needed for us to, you know, uh, because for me, that's what is more important is to make sure that the one hour that I put to work really translates in, into a benefit to, to, the, to, the, to the young world professional community. Uh, so for me, it wouldn't make sense to organize a workshop or a session if I didn't know who, how many, young world professionals we had in, in specialist groups or which specialist groups are more active or you know, things like that. So for me, it was more about taking time at a strategic level to understand what can I actually do to take the most out of the time that I have to dedicate. And I think that two hours a week make, make sense to me. Thank you, Ines. Emily, you talked about your experience while you were secretary, but now as a chair, yeah. Yeah, so as a chair, um, so again, this one isn't open to people who aren't already on the committee, but it's probably the one of the larger time commitment roles. Um, so according to the guidance document, it works out to about eight hours a week, um, which is equivalent to one full working day a week, but obviously it's spread out. You're not just <laughs> doing it, um, you know, sitting down at your desk and working from nine to five on IWA stuff. But um, yeah, so that could be spread out across yeah, being involved in um, a webinar like this, it could be yeah, corresponding with members, corresponding with the secretariat around different strategic issues, updating strategies, working with subcommittees, uh, working between the with different um, associations and things like that. So it's a really varied sort of role. Um, you get a lot of different exposure to different types of things, and. Uh, uh, so yeah, but it, like it's kind of scattered in that sort of way. So um, you have freedom, and then there's there's ebbs and ebbs and flows too. Like you'll have busy months and quiet months and things, months around major events like the forum, like the World Water Congress, are obviously just like 
chaos level busy, <laughs> but I think you'll find that with um, plenty of different um, association roles. Um, or if you've ever been involved in planning a conference before, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, but yeah, I hope that's, <laughs> uh, you know, a, a vision for some people going forward uh, if, you, if, you're, if you've got your eyes set on, on the chair role in the future. Um, thanks, Stephen. And I think we've got a few minutes left. There are a couple more slides from Isabella, so I'll just pop the screen back up for her to share. Yes. There we go. So. Okay. So for those that are not members and want to be a member, we have the discount code for new members. You can also share among your, uh, your chapter and your friends and colleagues uh, from the university if you're there or co-workers maybe. Uh, the next one. So um, until uh, 15 of May, we have the super early bird uh, rates for the Congress. So if you're planning to attend and if you're planning to attend the forum, you have to sign up for the Congress. And I, I do recommend that you sign up as early as possible so you can get um, this special rate for, for attending the Congress. And that's all for now. <laughs> That I have. Thank you, Emily, for sharing uh, the screen. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everyone, for joining. It was great getting to hear from a few people who are interested, and good luck with the applications. Um, are we yeah. taking pictures? I dressed up. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Hang on, let me stop sharing again. Uh, there we go. It's early morning. I. Yeah. <laughs> 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 So um, right. if you're comfortable with, do open your camera. Um, <laughs> we have this tradition, I would say, <laughs> about taking pictures <laughs> after all the, the meetings, the Young Water Professional meetings. So we have some records. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I'm taking some. Uh, Farouk, are you taking also? Yes, okay. I am. Okay, one, two. Three, go. <laughs> Everyone's awesome. looking, you know, <laughs> handsome and glamorous and smart. <laughs> um, From the morning to midnight. <laughs> yeah. With all yeah. the different time zones. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thanks everyone for joining. Good to see you all. And yeah, we'll look forward to seeing the nominations come in and uh, who might be on our next, next uh, Why Do We Feast Steering Committee. So thanks, everyone. Thank you for coming, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.